as famous as Thompson's violinist thought experiment is, it doesn't actually show all that much. More particularly, it doesn't actually establish what we would recognize as the pro-choice position. Consider this. Uh, well, consider first what it does establish. <clears throat> it seems to establish, and we talked about this at the end of the previous video, it seems to establish merely that in cases of involuntary intercourse, abortion is permissible. Is that a pro-choice position? Well, it doesn't, by the way we carve up these categories in our political landscape today, it doesn't seem to be actually. Uh, most Republican uh, or self-identifying conservative um, politicians, when they describe uh, themselves as pro-life, um, I don't know if this is most, but many at the very least, right? When many of these pro-life uh, conservative Republican uh, politicians describe their own views on abortion, they will say things like, yeah, uh, I think abortion is um, uh, immoral, and I think it should, uh, we should be allowed to um, prohibit it, except in certain cases. And the exceptions usually drawn are things like in cases of rape and uh, incest. And so most pro-life conservative Republican uh, uh, politicians could agree with Thompson's violinist thought experiment. They could affirm every step of it and affirm the conclusion. Yes, abortion in the case of, um, uh, in cases of, um, when the pregnancy is the result of rape, abortion is permissible, right? So the pro-choice position, so something like that, uh, often enough in our contemporary political discourse, um, is at home within the pro-life side of things. Uh, so certainly pro-choice people would agree, but the pro-choice position really seems to entail a lot more than that. It seems to involve, um, what well, seems to, it involves uh, abortion being permissible also in cases of voluntary intercourse, when the pregnancy came about uh, from voluntary intercourse. And arguably, Thompson's thought experiment, the violinist thought experiment, doesn't really have much to tell us about that, or it doesn't look designed to really handle a case like that. Thompson does not stop with the violinist thought experiment, however. It comes within the first few pages of the article. The majority of the article is still left. And so we should keep reading. And what we're going to find if you keep reading Thompson's article is that she does indeed address precisely this point. What about pregnancies that result from voluntary intercourse? What about pregnancies for which the woman is in part responsible Right when the woman is uh, at least partially responsible for um, the existence of the embryo or fetus, is abortion permissible in those cases? Thompson, to address this question, gives us another thought experiment. And this thought experiment involves what she calls people seeds. Let's turn then to the people seeds thought experiment. So what this is supposed to do is show us that pregnancy or that abortion is permissible even in those cases where the pregnancy resulted from voluntary intercourse. All right. So she uh, asks us to again imagine a scenario. She says, suppose it were like this. Suppose this happened. People seeds drift about in the air like pollen. And if you open your windows, one may drift in and take root in your carpets or upholstery. Right, so I got a little image showing this, right? So there's a person with a window 
and they open it up and the wind comes on in and you can see the little specks floating around there that's supposed to be those are the the people seeds now and if you let them in right they can root in your carpet or in your sofa or whatever else you have right and grow up into and develop into a person develop in well they already are people but develop into a whatever or a mature individual now you don't want children. So you fix up your windows with fine mesh screens, which you can see expertly drawn into the image there. Uh, the very best you can buy. As can happen, however, and on very, very rare occasions does happen, one of the screens is defective. So if you pay very close attention, you'll see a little hole in the screen right there, right? That's the defect and a seed drifts in and takes root. So this is a very broken screen apparently because there are seeds everywhere. You got three in the carpet there. You got, I don't know, a half a dozen more, almost a dozen floating around there. Right, this person's about to have a whole, uh, whole family full, a uh, whole house full of kids there. Um, does the person plant who now develops, right? So that thing down in the rug there, in the carpet there, have a right to the use of your house. She's asking us a question. She's trying to pump our intuitions like she did with the violinist. Back when we were looking at the violinist, um, she said something, uh, she asked a question, is it morally incumbent on you to accede to this situation? Do you have to stay plugged into the violinist? And her answer is clearly no. And so now she's doing the same thing. Does the person plant? have a right to the use of your house. Here she's a little bit more direct than she was in the violinist thought experiment. Surely not. Despite the fact that you voluntarily opened your windows and you knowingly kept carpets and upholstered furniture and you knew that screens were sometimes defective. Someone may argue that you are responsible for its rooting that it does have a right to your house because after all, you could have lived out your life with bare floors and furniture or with sealed windows and doors. But this won't do, for by the same token, anyone can avoid, an, uh, can avoid a pregnancy due to rape by having a hysterectomy. Or anyway, by never leaving home without a reliable army. Okay, so what is going on? So this case, the people seeds case is supposed to be analogous to a pregnancy where <clears throat> the woman uh, becomes pregnant uh, through voluntary intercourse. How exactly does the analogy work? Well, the idea is supposed to be, right? The people seeds, those are, that's like the fetus or the embryo opening your window and letting in a breeze is supposed to be uh, analogous to engaging in intercourse, right? The person voluntarily opens their window. The, the woman in the case that we're now imagining, the kind of pregnancy we're now imagining, voluntarily engages in intercourse. And the person, they open their window knowing that, well, you know, there are these people seeds out there and they might get in and so on. And the woman engages in intercourse knowing that you can get pregnant by doing that. Yeah, there's a, the analogy. The person with these people seeds flowing around, whatever, they don't want children, however. And so they buy one of these screens. Likewise, a woman uh, might not want children. And so she might use contraception or have her partner use contraception, right? And so the screens are supposed to be analogous to contraception and contraception sometimes fails while well, these screens sometimes fail, right? And so there's supposed to be uh, a series of these kind of similarities, right? And so these cases are supposed to be analogous. We set all that up and our question, can you vacuum up the people seeds? Can you get rid of them if one happens to get in? And she wants to say, well, clearly you could do that. Surely you could get rid of 
a people seed if one happened to get in, right? You were taking precautions, you bought these screens, it was defective, you were the one in 1,000 or whatever who had a defective screen, too bad for you, well, just vacuum the thing up. Surely it would be morally permissible for you to vacuum up the people seed. And if that's morally permissible, because this case is relevantly analogous to the case of uh, pregnancy that results from voluntary intercourse, clearly it's okay for um, a woman to obtain an abortion, even if she uh, is partially responsible for the embryo or fetus being there. Because after all, in this imagined scenario of people seeds, you're partially responsible for the person plant being in your house. You open the window. Yeah. Now, this argument is supposed to work in uh, a very, in the, it has the same structure as the violinist argument. Right? We start with the thought experiment, this story about the people seeds. We draw out an intuition from it. The intuition in this case is that uh, if a person plants or people seed happens to get in and take root, it's morally permissible to, uh, you know, to vacuum them up to whatever, however you get rid of a, of a people plant, I'm not, whatever. Right? You vacuum it up, okay? That's morally permissible, clearly. How could anybody deny that? Well, okay, that's all fine and good. That's just about this weird scenario. Well, the real important move in the argument then is to apply this intuition to the case we're interested in. What we're interested in is abortion. And in particular, in this case, we're interested in um, the abortion of a fetus that results from voluntary intercourse. And because these cases are more are, uh, are relevantly analogous, Thompson would argue, because they're relevantly analogous, if it's morally permissible to vacuum up the people seeds, it's more and to remove the people seeds, it's morally permissible to remove the fetus. Right? That's Thompson's argument. And so this people seeds argument, which actually gets much less press, so to speak, than the violinist argument, but the people seeds argument is the one that's really supposed to get us something like that pro-choice conclusion. This is what's really driving home um, uh, the claim that it's permissible to procure an abortion even in cases where uh, the woman has voluntarily engaged in intercourse and so is partially responsible for the existence of the fetus.